All right, hello everyone. Thank you for coming. This is Keep Passing Your Credentials, Synced and Under Control. My name is Salt. I have uh, actually given this talk once before here. Uh, I think it was in 2014. And um, I'm really excited to be back uh, giving it again because I think it's a very important topic and it's one um, put some time thinking into. So, uh, first off, if we can get this working. H down key. Yep. Beautiful. Everyone's seen this, right? Yeah. This, this, is, uh, this is why passwords that you remember don't really mean much. Um, if someone wants to get in and you know the password, eventually you're, you're, you know, you're going to give it up. Uh, how many people here currently use a password manager? Beautiful. Yes, yes. The majority of you. I'm really excited about that. Uh, we will go through keep pass, we'll go through my setup, we'll go through some of the recommendations I make, and then after that, um, maybe we can have a little discussion about how these can be improved and um, see where we go from there. All right, so what is a credential? I'm not just talking about passwords here. This is something I really want to hit on. Credential is a qualification. It is an authority granted, often by a third party, not always. Passwords are definitely a credential. Your house key is also a credential. <clears throat> a published paper, driver's license, what about a degree? These are all credentials. These are all things that we should somehow keep secure, but they're also all things that we need access to at some point. The really neat bit about KeePass is it's not just for passwords. It's for credentials. Now, the majority of you already use a password manager, but for those of you who don't yet, you should be. <laughs> Real reasons, um, we have three stages that most people go through for password management. One password everywhere. I'm sure most of us have at one point been this, right? Like, like I, know I, I know I sure was. Um, how about a few passwords? Probably even the ones of you who are using password managers use them to help remember. But you, you have like, you have your root password, you have your normal login password. You might have a couple email passwords. You may use them in a password manager, but when you're on the go, you don't necessarily want to be re remembering and pulling out this database and all that. So you kind of, you said, okay, well, we'll have one here, one here, one here. And then the stage we really all want to get to, and that's a unique password for everything. And this stage is very important, especially in today's connected world, because at some point, some site, some login you have is absolutely going to get owned and is absolutely going to get compromised. And if you have that password anywhere else, the first thing a competent attacker will do is try to use that password on your other accounts. So what we want is a unique password everywhere. Now, actually organizing this data can become a hassle. And I will get into kind of some of my recommendations as we go. But as I mentioned, this is for credential management, not just password management. So KeePass, KeePassX, I should say, uses attachments. And the beautiful thing about attachments is you can attach anything. What, what might be some examples that you would use? For example, your bank website has a normal password and it also has security questions, which are in effect a subpart of your normal password. So combined, they are one thing you know that can let you into the website. Sure, but that's still text. SSH keys. SSH keys are a great one. I don't know, maybe a resume, like an email. Resume? Yeah. What about a picture of your diploma? How about your house key? If you have a decent resolution picture of your house key, 
You could 3D print your house key if it became an issue. I have my passport, social security card. Of course, SSH keys. GPG key lives in there. The important credentials, the things that you need to keep secure, should be somewhere. Now, this is putting a lot of data in one place that's like, ah, oh, what happens if I lose it? What happens is that you use a system that you kind of can trust, that you can back on. Multi-factor auth. Most of us at this point have used or heard of 2FA, two-factor authentication. There's also three-factor authentication. The main three, something you know, a password, something you have, a physical key, whether that's a server, cert, or whatnot, and then something you are, which is biometric. I was really hoping to get biometric working before this talk, but I don't quite have the system in place for doing that well. If you have a fingerprint reader, like on your device, that could be a source of some, perhaps. But I'm not sure. That's something I would love to get working because I think that if we can really secure it with all three, that would make a better system. All right, so keep pass X. The X is important. I know I, I often say without and drop it. Floss, of course. It's been around since 2005. It was designed for Linux initially. So when I say keep pass, keep pass is in a, pro a program as well. But it was designed for Windows and then ported to Linux, but it wasn't really ported. And now it is really ported, and now it's keep pass 2. And it's good. It has a lot of cool features, and it's neat. But it's written in .NET. And to get it running on Linux, you have to install all of Mono. And I don't know about you, but uh, I, for the longest time, was this person who didn't install non-GTK graphical libraries. If it was Qt, I was like, nope, I guess that application's not going on my system. I, I'm the person who looks, his, looks at app, looks at the list and says, uh, yeah, that's installing too many things, not comfortable with too many things being installed. Oh, I'm good, I'll find an alternative. Now, we, I did have a favorite music player that kind of I, sometimes <coughs> Amrock gave it, gave it a little leeway, but when it got bad, I definitely dropped off on my system. Mono is one of these monolithic, <coughs> huge, lots of source packages that I don't really want my system, don't necessarily want to trust. So KeepSX, very minimal, built for Linux directly. But it is also cross-platform. It does work on other things. And it does use the same database, which is now the KeePass 2 database schema, but the same database as the other KeePass. So not actually an issue if you end up on it. Ah, fill. Apparently there's a little typo there. Um, having search. When you're talking about storing a bunch of credentials, you need to be able to find the one you're looking for. Having multi-factor authentication. Again, this is everything. We want it to be secure in itself. AES, A256, or 2FISH. There are probably even a couple others. I haven't really looked, kept up. Keygen. We're talking about storing a unique <coughs> password for every account. Of course you need it to be able to generate keys and do it well, do it securely, do it quickly. KeyPassX has all of this. But, but what are some of the other options? So, I mean, <laughs> we can go down the list. Uh, I have a couple I wanted to mention. Specifically, I get asked about a lot. Pen and paper. Who, who's... who's you know, seen their coworkers, perhaps been the coworker who has a sticky note with the passwords? No? I've seen that in video. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen that in real life. I've too. seen that in real life, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's kind of obvious. Uh, what about LastPass? I, for one, am not comfortable with something that is this much me, this much my identity, my <laughs> everything being on anyone's third-party server, especially one that's only accessible through the browser, which is often a very 
<laughs> a lot of questions there, but also has had no insecurity vulnerabilities. Like it's, it's, I understand it's easy to use, and ease of use is great, and it's better than not having password manager, but I definitely have questions. KeyPass 2, we already went through. I don't like the idea of mono and et cetera. Um, web browsers, yeah, it's okay, but those files are all, are all local, and I assume they're not the most secure. Um, then there's a lot of other ones. There's like 1Password and SafeWall and all these. Most are proprietary. Most are new. Most might be a little shiny, but I don't need that. I just want a good, solid, secure system. Um, there are three that I want to give some special note to, um, and I've since when I first gave this talk, they are new. Um, the first one is Master Password. Anyone here heard of Master Password? Couple, couple people. It's it's a neat concept. Um, the idea is you never write down any passwords. Instead, every time you need to log into a site, you go onto their site. And you say, I'm logging into this site, and you give them a password. And it basically hashes that. So the password that it's giving you is a hashed thing, so there are never passwords written down, and you could always recover them. I have some questions about the security, but I haven't looked at it that closely. Seems like a kind of cool concept if you're just dealing with passwords. Again, we're dealing with more than that. We're dealing with credentials. Um, another one, very important, I think, is pass. So keep pass X is GUI based. Pass is text-based. It's basically wrappers around GPG. That's it. Which is really cool if you are a person who lives in the terminal, if you're a person who's in a company that's going to be server access, something you can share like that. It's just, it's built for a command line. So I think that's really cool. It has GUIs. Uh, what? Pass has GUIs now? Yeah. Oh, cool. I haven't seen the GUIs yet, so that's awesome. But I, I, I've looked at the security, and it seems pretty decent. Um, and then the last one is KeePass CLI. Uh, it apparently has kind of been active as of at least last year. I have not personally used it, but the idea that you could maintain your own stuff in the command line, uh, that had been a downside of KeePass before. There also seem to be a couple of different projects that offer command line access to KeePass and KeePass X yeah. databases. So it's, other things are available, but I, I did want to mention those ones. All right. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. So, configuration. Key pass, somewhat large. Uh, has a lot of things you can do. These are a couple of the configuration points I recommend um, <coughs> going over at least, deciding for yourself. Um, remembering which one of the last one was used, you probably have one or two key pass databases, probably one though. You really want you know to only be tracking, dealing with one thing. Uh, asking before deleting, not a bad thing to have. Same with backups. Um, Autosave, eh, I don't know. Um, customized entry, you can, with this you can add fields. <coughs> maybe you need usernames, maybe you need website, maybe you need a few websites. You can really customize it. Um, clearing the clipboard, that's kind of important because uh, <laughs> I don't know about you, but yeah. but it's like, oh, I'm just going to paste this into, oh, dang it, now I need to change those passwords. Yeah. Everyone on IRC has it. Okay, quick, 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 quick. Um, and then locking the database after a certain amount of time, because this is a very important thing. You don't want it just to be sitting in the clear. Question? So I uh, comment on that. I actually recommend having a different password database for each schema of your life. Your work content should be in a different database. For your we'll get into that momentarily, but thank you. Um, password generation. It's kind of a big deal. <laughs> this is great. The uh, XKCD, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, the real takeaway here, through 20 years of effort, We've successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are hard for humans to remember, but easy for computers to guess. I mean, that's, it's true. And that's why we should be looking at one of these types of password managers, especially one that can generate random strings that you can never remember, but it's also very difficult to guess. 
This is also why he said password, and I'm obviously guilty of saying password a lot. We should really be talking about past phrases because by writing out a phrase, that is a much, much more solid and memorable um, security mechanism. That being said, length is obviously a big one. People recommend minimum of 12 characters. I recommend minimum 20. It could be minimum 50. The website shouldn't, some of them restrict it, but they shouldn't because you're never gonna remember this. You're never gonna use it. I hate websites where when you're entering the password in one place have one link and entering it in a different place have a different link. Yeah, I hate websites that use JavaScript for their password. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, lookalike characters. Lookalike characters don't matter as much because you're never going to actually remember these passwords. But there might come a time, and it definitely has happened for me, where I have to open my database and type out manually a like 20 character long password, and it's annoying, so I'm like, eh, I turn off lookalike characters. So it kind of keeps them from, you know, L's and 1's and uppercase I's, etc. cetera. Uh, you want something from every group. Alpha, numeric, special, at least. Usually you want like upper and lower. Usually you want a couple special characters. And then the pronounceable, I, I, they have the option. I think it's kind of useless because I don't need to remember these. That's the whole point. You don't remember your passwords. <laughs> but KeePass is pretty good with their password manager. I actually don't like the newer one. And I've uh, submitted some requests. I've talked to the developer. Um, the newer one has changed some of this, um, this like randomization where like you can now just say I want special character. You can't say I want a special character from this set. And like I, I feel like that's really a downside that I hope that they revert. Is that a new version of KeePass X or like? Uh, this is an older version of KeePass X. Okay. The newer one they've changed some of that, and I think I'm trying to get them to revert some of it because KeePass X. Uh, while it's been around since 2005, actually has gone through a couple of somewhat major revisions, um, even recently, which is why I think they've downgraded their password generator in some ways. All right, so that's configuration. That's getting it to be usable. But, oh, yep. Yeah. Are there any of those major revisions for a security reason, or is it all just a setting? Um, you know, I wish I knew. It seemed like they were rewriting it because no one had been updating it for so long that they wanted it to redo the architecture with newer, uh, you know, newer language, newer, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I don't think there's there's been I don't know if there's been any actual security. Like I feel like maybe one, but it was a long time ago and it had nothing to do with the rewrite. Structure I think is pretty important when we get to this huge database of your life. So, this is the structure I kind of recommend. It, recommend. Um, incoming, this is the GTD capture. It's just where stuff goes. If, you, if you, you, you're not dealing with it right that second, maybe you get a password, you get an email, you get a something at a conference, and you're like, ah, put it there. We'll deal with it later. We might even change it later. We have a few top level that you just keep empty because you know, it's just structural. Cards and accounts. We talked about credentials. What's an arrogant credential? Your credit card. I have my credit cards in there. Number and code. If I, if I lose my cards, I still have the phone numbers, I have all of that. <laughs> yes, it becomes a very scary target. But, you know. Identities. What are identities? I don't know, what are they? <laughs> um, so these are things like your open PGP key, um, X509 certs. I mean, this is what I would consider like an identity file. Social security might go in there, but I also might go in cards. You kind of have to make these types of decisions, but like, I feel like it deserves its own little section. Um, oh, also, you can um, put logos next to these so that when the entries, they're all in a logo, and so it kind of visually can tell you where and what and what you're dealing with, especially important when you start just searching, because you search, and you're like, oh, what is that password? Oh, it's, it has to be from that, and uh, locks. 
This is what I'm talking about. Keys, padlock combos, physical locks, software licenses. I mean, because we all love buying proprietary software and losing the access key. <laughs> systems. Systems and services. The way I define that difference, systems are things you own and control. Services are third party. But again, these are all your personal accounts. Shared. There's only one real password I can think or credential I can think that we share. <coughs> I'd love to hear about some other ones that people can think of now and or during a little discussion. But uh, Wi-Fi networks. They, these aren't things that are really your password. Um, others, you know, always good to have miscellaneous. Why not? If you're building a personal database like this, you could do websites that you recommend to people frequently. Just so that it's in a place like this. That sounds like delicious or some other service that isn't really a credential. Yeah. I mean, it's okay, yeah, sure. Build a database for your life. Come to my second talk at 3 p.m. Uh, after I've had some of these, and we'll discuss uh, building a database for your life and contacts. Civi CRM. All right, organization. These are the passwords, the credentials that when you leave, you will either pass on or delete. They are not yours really. So I have like a web development company. So I have that as a top level, and then I have different clients as lower levels. Pretty, pretty clear. Pretty easy. Any questions on any of these? I think it's a pretty good structure. Um, like I said, I do recommend something like this, but obviously you don't have to use my layout. Now this becomes the next real question. If we're not using something like LastPass, how do we keep it synchronized? Because you don't want to be editing your password database. You don't want to be having one flaw sick of the other. I don't know. I, I know when I was trying to find these uh, slide talks, this is from 2014. I found it in like an archive that contained an archive that had some folders in it that were like finale backup. And, and there were some password databases in there. I'm like, ah, uh, if I were to take that, and look at my current one, and do you know just how much brain width it would take to put those together? We don't want to do that. We want to keep things synchronized and backed up. And when I mean backed up, I do mean that in a, a variety of ways. So I like Git Annex. Who has heard of Git Annex? Couple hands, couple hands. You might have heard about them somewhat recently, um, or at least the uh, lead developer. Um, they, he basically was up in arms post about GitHub changed their terms of service and he took all of his projects down because he didn't want a update to be done because it might affect licensing. Kind of overblown, but that was the guy behind Git Annex. Really cool. I like it uh, for one because this left side are all third party basically. You're giving it access to someone. That's, that's what we want to avoid, especially something that's secure. Yes, AES-256 is theoretically currently pretty good, especially when you have a nice long passphrase and then a second factor authentication that you don't upload anywhere. And then maybe a third factor to get to that second factor and uh, okay, maybe pretty good, but it's still a third party that has this database. The other side takes a lot more, I don't know, skill setting up, some sort of knowledge. Uh, Git Annex is basically Dropbox. They have an assistant. They have a, it's a GUI that just lives like Dropbox. And because it's that easy, I think that that's an important reason to have it. The way it actually works is it syncs between different Git Annex clients. You can have them on servers, you can have them on your mobile, you can have them other places. But it's basically, uh, I don't know, completely a technology, but some sort of a push or pull mechanism that goes between them. So yes, there are, you know, there's, there's an encrypted channel, a handshake, et cetera, that has to get formed, but it's not actually living anywhere else. It's just syncing. Does yes? it have version control like Git or? Um, Git Annex does in some senses, and this is, great question. Thank you. Um, so 
Git index has these two main use cases. Um, one is called the archivist, and one is called the nomad. The nomad is the use case we're talking about here, about synchronizing. It's, it's I plugged in, I noticed the file was out of date, and it synchronizes it. The archivist is this kind of interesting use and format that they have that allows you to mm, almost keep like a structure of your different file systems and it will tell you when files have changed or gone out of sync on the different structures so like your external hard drives and you can say oh these are duplicate files over here and like it it does all this pretty intelligent stuff um, as far as doing revision controls I don't think it does that I could be mistaken if someone knows please let me know now or later <laughs> Oh, it does. No, it does conflict resolution. I don't think it does like rollbacks. I don't, I don't think you can roll back. Um, but yeah, it might. Um, own cloud or next cloud, whatever you want to call it. Those um, have their own password manager. Not saying that's better or worse than this. It's just not something I necessarily use. And they've had some instabilities, so it's like. Sandstorm is this other really cool project. I don't know if you've if you heard about Sandstorm. It's like being able to kind of have these uh, I don't know like jail web apps that you run and one click install and all that. They have like password manager on there. I, I'm just worried about using something that the password manager is so tied to some technology that it may or may not have been proven versus just a password manager that that's what they do. Password manager, credential manager. So that's why I'm a fan of Git, uh, Git Annex. Um, <coughs> let's see. I'm not, I'm not sure what my next slide is. It could be the, the last slide. It looks like it is. Um, so let's, let's wrap up this part, get to some talking, and uh, I will say again, for all of you who uh, were patient at the beginning and have made it, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you actually being interested in this topic. Um, we talked about multi-factor authentication. How many of you have one of these? Yeah? Dongle, this is a Duo uh, hardware authentication chip. I'm generally already What was that? <laughs> I feel like, I feel like some some sort of artificial intelligence is scanning my chips, sir. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, that integrating it with the passwords, I think would be great. YubiKeys, Google Authenticator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I see some YubiKeys there. I don't actually have my Yubi on me anymore because I got you know, the better one. <laughs> No, they're great. They're, they're all great. We should be really talking about and thinking about security. So I think I'm going to shut shut down the slides. Um, but I, I wanted to to kind of keep keep going, keep talking. It's uh, I'm going to shut down part of the slides. <laughs> um, let's 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 first of all, are there any uh, questions immediately? I saw a hand over here. Given any thought to keeping the static information like you had in their license keys for software you own and blah 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 mm -hmm. separately from the dynamic information that does change just to keep your file size smaller in transferring and syncing? It's a really interesting question. Um, I have done something similar to that where the things that are lower security, I make a mobile file and that's the only one that transfers because it's smaller and because it's, you know, if it did get compromised, it would be as, as crit critical as social security card. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think that, that having it all in one place is pretty important. Um, but I, I can definitely see uh, reasons for it. Another Just example of that. Things like, uh, like pictures files, of your key. Files of your passport and all this yeah. other crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That all is going to make the thing grow pretty large. Sure, but it if doesn't. You're transferring it all the time. If you're transferring it all the time. I'm trying to remember 
if git annex handles, I don't database. think, yeah, if it's a whole database, so it's, it's gonna have to send the whole thing. So you're totally right. That's a, a really good point. So um, for the transferable ones, you might wanna use git annex in a um, archivist mode. So what you're transferring is not necessarily full database, but like a smaller one because of that. So very great point. Thank you. Yes. What are you doing for a mobile solution? I know, as far as I'm aware, there is no keypass X edition. There, there are in fact uh, two decent mobile solutions for <coughs> keypass. Uh, keypass itself, keypass.info.2, uh, has a mobile client. What's the two version though, isn't it? But. KeePassX now is supportive of the two database. Okay. Everything's kind of switched. Caused a lot of issues when I first did it, but if you're starting something new or doing it, look up your room and you'll get there. Um, there is KeePass Droid, which also reads the files, and that's what I end up using. Keep it's free. Two Android is pretty great too. KeePass Two Android. Yeah, no, that's yeah. the other one. The the one that's kind of I think official ish. Maybe. Yeah. KeePass Droid there, is there, not. There's several third party ones. There, there's several third party solutions, which brings up an interesting point, though. Should we be trusting these yeah. third party <laughs> solutions? I mean, with, the, with KeePass X on Linux, this is a repository that's been signed, et cetera, et cetera. Probably pretty decent. But on Windows, it's a binary. <laughs> on Android, uh, <laughs> especially on Android when they already say, no, we're a third party. I mean, yes, they know how to open it, but has anyone actually done a security assessment of, you know, if it suddenly opens it and starts sending things to a server? No, I'm not sure. It's like an open source package repository like F-Droid. Like F-Droid, absolutely. Yes? How do you sync to your phone? How do I sync to my phone? Get Annex. It'll, it'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, though another option that could be interesting, uh, would be to not sync anywhere and instead read off of a networked file system. I'm not sure. There are pros and cons. Okay. Syncing means you don't have to have a server. But that's something that the uh, the get on your computer handles, or like the get on your phone. You have get annex on both. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. The reason I was asking about the mobile is because I do also run KeePass Droid, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have all the features that KeePass X does, where it's like KeePass X allows you to make an attachment. So I like phone attach I want to secure photos and things like that on my phone. I'd love to keep them in the same database. I have not found something that would do that for me on the phone. I will be honest, I almost never actually modify my database on the phone. I just use it. But that's a very good point and um, it is open, so hopefully they can work on that. Yeah, keep that right is GPL. So. Yeah, it's GPL. There you go. Thank you. Um, before I get there, in the back. Well, this is probably outside the scope of what you're talking about, but uh, I've been looking into uh, user level management, like actual the um, So the way I've dealt with that, um, and this kind of gets to the organizational thing, is that I have had shared databases, um, and it's, yeah, you just kind of use other solutions. KeePass itself is just a database. <laughs> but it's, it's definitely interesting and knowing, I don't think there's any good way to keep in sync a segment of the database. And I think that that would uh, be, I don't, I don't know how feasible at all, but if you, I think with pass, you know, pass is like a file structure when you open it because of how it kind of does it. It would be much easier to build on top of that. I don't know if key pass would be easy to do something like that, but I think that would be a very important and cool feature if you could synchronize just organization X between these databases, for instance, future feature. Do you think there would be a possible security risk in if, if you knew credentials already for that specific consultant or? Yeah, no, uh, that that's not a um, that that is not how <laughs> salty. Yes, oh uh, no, that that is uh, not as much of a risk in this case because it's. Once it's closed, it's entirely encrypted. Once it's open, it's in memory, but the actual file doesn't be encrypted. Uh, speaking of being in memory, uh, we talked about clearing out of your um, copy-paste, right? You want your clipboard to clear, thank you. Um, <laughs> they have a feature, it's called autofill. 
I use it occasionally, but I would hesitate to use it on anything too secure because it does not, on my system at least, and great thing about Linux, we all have kind of different systems, but on my system, it does not always paste the username, then the password do I want. Mm -hmm. Especially a lot of new web apps, new websites that are like, you can't paste things because that's security. So that's where you're like, oh, I'm going to have to type this. Uh, or do some other weird thing. Open the inspector and set the uh, Right, yeah, right that's exactly it. Inspect it, be like, nope, I will paste that text in there. <laughs> but if you just control V it, sometimes it'll be like, oh, now we're going to use commands and control and like start opening windows and I don't know where things are getting pasted anymore and it's like ah <laughs> but it's also kind of a nice fun feature because it is, does make it easier oh, it's more secure than the clipboard too and so so the the clipboard security is I think a very interesting thing which clipboards are more secure less secure when the, it's open the memory security is interesting thing um, get annex are there sec more secure ways, more secure functions? Looking at that would be an interesting future actual kind of looking at this. I may have missed this, but did you talk about best practices for handling uh, the database master password? Maybe. Yeah. I, I didn't really talk about it, but I did somewhat touch on passphrases, not passwords. Okay. And. Um, can you, you can't do dual factor authentication with the master, can you? You absolutely can. You can, okay. Uh, so that's what I was about to say. So one is passphrases, and two is currently can do dual, okay. which I would prefer to be three. Yeah. But you can do dual because you can say you need to have this key file and you need to know the password. And that's, that is basically not syncing that key file or having that key file attached to your YubiKey or something yeah. is the way to to get closer to so a better like security model. Ultimately, like the most distilled point of vulnerability is right, right there. Um, so I still have it. Also, I want to mention with the backups and stuff, I mean, I keep a copy that I update not as frequently as I should, but maybe once every six months in a fireproof safe. Yeah. Because on two forms of media, because you never know. Yeah. Right? This is your life. This is, you put everything in it. Also, CDs. CDs are not good. Yeah. But, you know, if you're updating every six months, it's not terrible either. Yeah. So, uh, question about the fireproof safe. Is it fireproof for paper or fireproof for data? That's a good question. And the second thing, what do you recommend for the external uh, authentication keys? We're talking about UV keys and what else? Oh, uh, Duo Security is a new one that uh, I'm at the University of Washington and they've rolled out. Um, so it also has a authenticator app like Google Authenticator. Um, or a hardware security key. But YubiKey is good consumer level, whatnot, and you know, pretty affordable. It's better, better than other things. I, I didn't know about GitHub Next, but I recently discovered something that seems similar called Sync Thing. Are you familiar with that? I have not. Uh, sync Thing? Sync Thing. Okay. Yeah. Love to always be looking at different solutions. Yeah. Hey. Before I, before I, any questions from this side of the room? I'm just trying to. All right, uh, yeah. Do you recommend the same link in your password for your master password versus uh, sending password as 20 links? Absolutely not. I think your master password should probably be over 100 characters. It's a sentence. It's, it's just something that it would be very difficult. And, and, and realistically, again, if you're being tortured with, like, I don't know, waterboarding, and you yell out some random sentence, may or may not be an issue, but realistically, you've, you're now in a different threat mode. <laughs> you may have touched on this, and I may have missed it, but um, in, in a, uh, a situation where, say you have um, a supervisor and three subordinates, and you want to have access to a shared, um, a shared database, um, but you want the master to, be, to revoke access to the subordinates at any time, um, is there anything, any tools that you've come across that support something like that that, that also keeps in mind all of the aforementioned? It's called having multiple user accounts. <laughs> to, a, to, a Actually, shared, to a shared to a shared database. So, so no. What you would do in that case, 
Oh, uh, something I didn't touch on that's related, but what you would do in that case is you would get rid of access through some user authentication mechanism, user accounts, whatnot, and then you would change the passwords because realistically, if it's yeah. shared, they could have, you know. Um, but what that touches on that I think is a very important feature that this has is reminders for password expiration. So your password expires, sometimes it's forced on you to reset, sometimes you just should. But that's a built-in mechanism. I guess, I guess, sorry, I wasn't specific enough. If there, okay. was, if there was any kind of um, revision tracking in a shared, a shared instance so, we could, so you could see what user made the changes to the previous entry. So, um, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, I'm not sure. So uh, just to touch on your question, uh, key pass is actually made for an individual. There's not shared accounts for it. So you have a single username and password, master password to set up and use it into it. There is a tool uh, called TeamPass that's out there. It's actually the only open source one that I've been able to find that's easy to use. Um, it's kind of a pain to set up, but it allows multiple users. You can integrate it with Active Directory. Uh, or free IPA to find out what you use for your, your work infrastructure. And uh, it allows um, creating groups and changing group access for different uh, groups of passwords and, and file structure cool. in the database itself. I look forward to checking Team Pass out. Um, it wasn't on my search scope, so very interesting. It, it, is, it is hard. and. Um, that's why I, what I would like ideally like to see is that you have your your you're able to say uh, this section organization X uh, just syncs with their organization X something like that I think could be a very useful future feature improvement. Um, so I'm currently using one password and it's it's actually pretty good. Like I have a mm -hmm. web great, does biometric all that stuff. Um, but it's not open source, obviously. Um, but I guess what I'm wondering is a lot of times we trade, like, we take bumps in the road, you know, even though, like, just to have the, the open source thing. I'm just wondering what other pitfalls you found with, like, if it's syncing errors, like, what, what has been the pain points in using KeyPass? And also, do you know how many migrations passed from one pass without just typing everything in again? Um, I'm not sure one pass itself, but most password, um, other password managers, if the database is known, have some sort of conversion script you can do. Uh, I mentioned the kind of the pains for me. One of them was going from KeePass 1 to KeePass 2 database schema. Um, and and <laughs> diffing some of these older files. Uh, I just ended up dumping them to plain text, doing it, and re-going. And like, it's, it's super unfortunate, but because KeePass can import plain text, that might be a better option than hand typing. When you're importing and exporting from these programs, is there some danger about exporting it to plain text and having that entire plain text file on the computer? And then once you do import it into the next one, is there ways that you have found or how you've done to basically get rid of that plain text? Absolutely, an issue. And uh, it's also I, it's terrifying. Okay. Yeah. Offer you an FFS. Uh, I, I, file when I have done this, and and um, you have a you, I've seen your talk uh, given many years ago in a very small group. But the idea of having a very secure system that you do anything <coughs> like that that you know lives inside memory, inside whatnot, that then can be wiped and go away is is basically what would I would recommend. Um, whether that's tails or some sort of a cubes or uh, yeah, something built on top of something. Your desktop because your passwords are going to live there anyway. Mount a tempfs on some directory. In fact, if you're running systemd, you probably have such a directory if you look at your mounts for your user that it created to store files like this and store things in a tempfs. Even if it was that one that was made for that purpose, just Find the place where your computer will let you store arbitrary files in RAM temporarily and use that as your work button. Though there are RAM vulnerabilities, and if we look at a <laughs> large one that people might have heard of recently, um, what was it? I, 
I don't want to drop the name. Was it Cloudflare? Uh, or the other one? No. Heartbleed. No, Heartbleed Cloudbleed, yes, but it was no, it was a memory. It was a memory exploit. That's it was that, that, that was on their servers though, and the issue with Cloudbleed is that they were basically doing an aggregate proxy for everyone. It, yes, yes, yes. But my point is there are memory well, yes, there vulnerabilities are by so it's if you whenever you're doing it, and this is something I I would highly recommend in this case. Yes, tempo, temp, very good, et cetera, et cetera. Um, don't be online. Disconnect your network. <laughs> I, it's, I, absolutely, yes. Your other option is you could create a loopback device and do a lock subscription on that file system, put it to that lock encrypted file, and then when you delete it, then delete the image and still bring the data on the hard drive. So the, the, the encryption of that loopback device image yeah, but it's still going to be a random Anyway, it's 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 a very theoretical topic. <laughs> Stay offline if you're going to do it. Use encrypted swap. Encrypt encrypted swap. Yeah, I mean, there's. But like I said, if you like were to do it on an active tail system, for instance, right? It it, it run it loads itself inside load memory, and thus when it goes away, it goes away. Things like that. <coughs> Um, do you have much experience with OTP, one-time password thing? So I, I, I got that question earlier, and I was going to try to do something. I didn't really get time to do it. Um, I have had some experience with them. Um, you know, I've done some theoretical things, but as far as doing them in relation to the password management, I have not. I don't know if KeePass has any sort of support for that. I know, like, I have, so I have um, one of the lower, and UB keys that doesn't have that. And I recently got the Duo security key, so I haven't had the opportunity yet. Do you, do you know if those work? Because I, I meant like on the Donkle specifically, it seems better than the password management. Yeah. Um, do you know if they work on mobile at all? I mean, like so at least Duo security is very mobile, like integrated. Oh, cool. Yeah. And it's, it's really odd. Duo security wasn't in my slide notes. But it was in these other notes, and then I got it recently, and these systems 2014, I'm like, apparently they've been around a minute, so, you know. Do you have comments on the dedicated hardware solutions for password management, such as, like, if you've ever heard of it, the NUK, or perhaps using something general purpose, like the USB Armory as a password manager store? I know it's a lot of hardware to throw in Yeah. Um, so using something like USB Armory, I think, would be a very good idea. Um, for those of you who don't know, USB Armory is basically a system on a chip. Um, and by having it all live and load on some physical device, you know, you can, is, the more you can keep it off of, of something that is accessible, I think, the better. But I don't have any specific ideas beyond that. This is great. I'm really glad that we're, we're able to have these questions, these discussions. Uh, my last, so in 2014, I gave this talk twice. I gave it uh, once here and then once at a, um, the American Hacker Camp Out, so a, a more security focused thing. Um, I will say that from that conversation, a lot more questions came up on the actual encryption and the actual streams and the, these sorts of things. And I don't have as many answers for that before your questions come. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting. I think that people should definitely be considering these questions, should definitely be using these tools, and I'm happy to help to talk more, to submit reports, requests, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, I, I, I wanna say uh, thank you to everyone who came. Thank you to my uh, security support, um, we are, turning this into a security conference, one drink at a time. And um, I will be here. I'm at the snowdrift.coop booth as well, slash OSI booth, and it, which is also right next to the Siegel booth, Seattle GNU Linux. It's a conference in October 6th and 7th this year. 
that is uh, kind of akin to this one, but held in Seattle. If there are no further questions, thank you very much.